today's one of those days you got to think. All right, well, here's where we're at. Dwayne liked to be here today, but he's been having a about for the last three or four weeks. Building fell in, about lost his Jeep, things like this we'll show you in a minute. So he's off doing the thinking thing today. He's resurrecting himself for all of you. So you have to deal with me. So I know you're disappointed and sad, but you'll live through it. What we're going to do is we're, we're going to show you some of the apparatuses that we're doing at D-Day to, uh, you know, we can't afford tools and, and we can't find the tools we need anyway because the stuff we do is so crazy that they haven't even made that thing yet. So we're making the thing that does the deal to make it happen for you at D-Day. And I'm going to take you through that most of this afternoon. So here's where we're at. See what I got to put up with? Ed, he's always, he's always, ah, the music and now he's trying to take my spot. So anyway, we go through the, the worst snowstorm known to man. So we're, we've dug out, we're, we're back to normal again. So now we're, we're trying to get the star foam cutting apparatus put together, which I'm going to show you this. Check we this out. We found out that a electric chainsaw is the best way to go. And, um, the reason being is the fact that it doesn't have hot exhaust and it melts a little star foam to the muffler. So this tends to work better. So Terry, he's been working on this thing and it's a real nice piece because he's done it twice. And now he's on the third time. So hopefully today we'll get all the bugs worked out of it. But it works pretty slick. And of course everybody tells, oh, you use hot wire, you can cut that star foam. Well, you can't because it's got water in it. It's, all this star foam's come out of the leg. So this is this is what we have to do. We have to engineer something we can cut wet star foam, and this is the only way it's gonna work efficient. So here in a minute, we'll show you the frame and how we're gonna cut star foam, and we'll start moving some blocks today. So we are in the building process. Today is the 5th of March, and uh, we're on our way for D-Day. Just a stick that I found off the ground. You're wrong. This is a custom stick. I gotta hold this down while Terry welds it. See that? Specially made for that. Okay, now all the pressure's on me. Let's go to the foam pile and see what happens. Okay, so you probably think this looks like a, a conglomeration of stuff. Well, it's really not. We planned this right down to the, the very bolt and nuts. It's because we planned things so well. We made sure our building fell down because we needed these great rails that you see here. So uh, we made we made sure we, you know, we used that. It worked out well for us. Terry's put a lot of time into this, and everything's adjustable. So anytime we come up to a star foam block, if we need a more narrow or whatever, we can adjust this as wide as we need it. It's going to be pretty cool. Uh, I think uh, probably another 15 years from now, we'll probably get at least three buildings up. We're looking forward to it. The little rollers on the saw, that's off of your building. Uh, we're real scavengers around here. Whatever we can find that we can make work. And I figured if the building had to go, might as well use it for whatever we could. You may see some more of it appear out here in the future too. You just never know. How many hours do you think you actually got into this? Uh, 30. <laughs> Quite a few. You kind of, you're like kind of a full-time job somewhere then, wouldn't you? Yeah. All right, guys, you definitely got me on the spot here. We're gonna, we're gonna see how she works out. I've already rebuilt it a couple of times, a little slight miscalculations. So, a little nervous and let's just see what Seen the apparatus work, you've seen Terry at his best, and uh, obviously Dwayne has definitely got his thumb on the project. 
one thing that you got to keep in mind is our good friends at, at all those other environmental agencies, we're trying to work really close with them to uh, continue to be a green uh, you know, environment, a green business here. All this extra styrofoam that you see come out of these projects and doing these buildings, we don't burn and we don't throw away and we don't bury it. What we do is we're going to chip it up, put it in bags, and then we're going to spray it as well so you have bunkers that are permanent and they're a lot easier to move around. So instead of when you guys come and start moving all the stuff from around, we're actually going to spray it as well. It's going to be bagged up where we can really use it to fortify places like Utah and Shore Beach and really eventually make that a neat environment as well.